Dune is arguably one of the greatest movies of this century. Whether that's the cast, the director, the setting or the editing, this film strives for excellence. But the one thing that makes Dune different than most movies is the music. I remember as a 13 year old going and seeing science fiction movies and going, why do all these science fiction movies have European orchestra, orchestral sounds, romantic period tonalities about them? We're supposed to be on a different planet, different culture. So the question comes up, why would there be romantic classical orchestra music? No. Dune doesn't want to be that movie, Dune wants to be different, and it is. First of all, I want to go back into Dune part 1, break down the music and then compare it to how it evolved in part 2. I haven't seen part 2, so no spoilers ahead. Now, first let's break down what we can hear. There are four different layers. First of all, we have the drums with the weird rhythm and triplets that always gets faster right before the next phrase starts. It separates, but at the same time, it also creates direction and it drives forward. Then there's the bass layer and the ostinato motif. That's how I call it, because it always repeats itself and this is basically then an ostinato. We will take a look at these two together because they are the framework behind the harmony of Dune. Generally speaking, we have these long pedal points in the bass that indicate our root note of the chord. What we can hear on top is made out of this scale. And in classical music, we know this as an Arabic scale. It is basically a major scale, but with a flat two and flat six. And because Charles Connell already explained this so perfectly how this sounds, I'm gonna let him do the job. Is it? Well, it's major, I guess. But it also kind of sounds minor in a way, even though it's not minor, but it kind of has this dark, mysterious type of sound to it. Definitely what we sometimes think of as a Middle Eastern Arabic type of sound. We start with D in the bass. Then there's E flat in the bass. Let's say from simplicity we have D major and E flat major. We have taken the one chord D major and we shifted it up to E flat major by one semitone. These chords are very close on the piano keys. In fact, they're direct members. But in the circle of fifth, which is way closer to what we hear, they're very far away from each other. And this is what creates this interesting sound. Then we have the last part of the piece, the melody. The harmony is of course the same, but what makes this melody so powerful? It goes against the nature of the human voice to sing huge intervals, so 6th, 7th octave or even higher. Generally speaking, huge intervals are very powerful and expressive because they are difficult to sing and they require a lot of effort. I find it equally disturbing as I find it brilliant. The first time I saw them arriving on the planet Arrakis and I saw the bagpiper, you know, I went, oh, of course, they're the royal house. So normally you have like, you know, trumpet fanfare or something like this, heralding, you know, the new ruler. But bagpipes, they're not just Scottish, Celtic or Irish, but I know that they're Caledonian ones and Spanish ones and Middle Eastern ones. And the independent development of the bagpipe around the globe confirms that it can be built everywhere in every civilization. So also from a future human colony. That's where we have to endure this disturbing sound. The bagpipes used are not actually bagpipes. The bagpipe you hear is really my guitarist Guthrie Garvin 
imitating a bagpipe on his guitar. And then we have the 30 bagpipe players come in. I play this thing, which is a zurna. And I'm not going to do it now because I will break all of your ears and everything. Believe me, I'm doing you a favor. Just, not to just break do it. Just, oh I just want to see the enamel, like... He got me playing notes that I didn't know I could play up there. He doesn't know, but that, he pushes us. That, by the way, is partly the bagpipe. Yeah. It's not a bagpipe. <laughs> Let's break it down. We have again a D pedal point, but then we have something a bit different. It's very close to the Hungarian minor scale, which looks like this, but just with a C. And I guess this should portray the same emotions as our Arabic scale. When you are asked to do something that is not in the traditional parameter of what you would think the voice could do. And then you say yes to doing something that, in your words, is reckless. Yes. <laughs> Amazing things start to happen. There's a strength, there's a force that hits you, even without, you know, reverb and compressors and all sorts of stuff. And that was in her voice. I feel like this sounds even more foreign than the original one. It sounds more like a synthesizer. The general idea and the harmony stay the same. Hans Zimmer just adds more space, more interstellar war to it and more kazoo. There's something new in the guitar that sounds like a clock ticking. I think it's some kind of echo or delay where you hear every note four times. Like it's playing 16th notes. It adds some kind of urgency. Although Dune sounds very different from traditional film scores that we're used to, I have to argue that the harmonies are actually quite simple. The Arabic scale is nothing that is uncommon in classical music. I don't think it was used in Star Wars, but it is common and it sounds very similar to harmonic minor. Let's break down what we just heard. We start with A major and this is our tonic. Then we turn this into A major 7 with the 7th and the bass and we solve to D minor. We go back to A major and we resolve again to D minor. And this establishes D minor as our new tonic. Why? Because of this 5-1 relationship between A major and D minor. Then after D minor we go different. We go to A minor, then to B flat major, and then we stay here a bit and we transform this chord basically into G minor 6, but with a third in the bass, to this because we have this B in the bass and then we go to A because it's a minor second, this is a Phrygian half cadence. Very traditional in classical music. Compare this to the Dune C scene from Star Wars. I asked to find a key signature in this piece. The music is just so much more complex in terms of harmony. I'm not saying that one is better than the other. Star Wars harmony is basically romantic tonality, so a lot of median harmonies, chromaticism, add some Stravinsky and bitonality, that's it. Stuff that we also find in Dune, but in way simpler usage. What I want to say is this. Dune does not sound different because it's harmonical complexity, but rather it's usage of different sounds. In Star Wars, the score is more important than the atmospheric sounds. In Dune, Zimmer rather describes the atmosphere. The voice, the bagpipes, the wind and drone sounds, and this is what makes Dune different. Click this video right next. Thanks for watching and we see you on the next one.